Welcome to Risky Business, a show where we get to explore new and innovative ways to understand and reduce risk by bringing together some of the leading professionals in the transportation and the insurance industry. My name is Scott Grandis. I hope you enjoy the show. Let's kick it off. Welcome to Risky Business. Uh, this is a, a place where we look at risk at all different levels and explore all kinds of uh, cool ways to take a look at transportation uh, and insurance. And today I have one of the rock stars, actually the rock star on our uh, on the development team. Uh, he is responsible for coordinating and spearheading all of the things that we're building with the new Risky Business platform, which is the way we monitor risk in real time. So I've got George with me here. George, welcome to the show. Um, I'm going to start out by saying that on today's show, George and I will be enjoying some cocktails um, so that we can uh, relax and have a little fun because we work <laughs> hard all the time. And by the way, uh, folks that watch the show, you know that I always have a coffee mug. So this is George. You might not know, but he's kind of a big deal. <laughs> We're all a big deal, Scott. <laughs> We're all a big deal. We're all a big deal. So, hey, listen, for a little bit of background for everybody that's going to be listening, um, give us some, some some kind of some information on you. What have you done? Where you've been? Uh, what do you do with technology? Fill me in while I have a drink. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks for having me on. First off, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to be on here and talk about this thing. Uh, it's it's been an exciting project, you know, even before Risky Business with ClearTrack and working with you, Scott, it was always exciting. So, you know, when I had the opportunity to be on this project, I was like, yes, I'm in. Um, but for me, uh, you know, I've been, I'm a software developer. I've been a software developer since, what, 2003 or so. So it's almost been 20 years now that I've, that I've done this. And I've worked, I worked a lot in the government sector. I worked for the Coast Guard. I was a worked for a contracting company for the Coast Guard. And I did that for 15 years and uh, eventually kind of, you know, it fizzled out for me and it wasn't as challenging. And uh, my buddy, uh, Brian Stratif, who works with Lowers Risk Group, Good old came Brian. on board here at Lowers and uh, he, he sent me a, a rec one day for an open position for a senior developer. And I was like, hey, you know, this might be kind of cool. We work together again and I don't know anything about Lowers Risk Group. and uh, and the technologies they worked in, it was all new to me. So I was a little bit, you know, skittish about it, but came in, love the people, love the environment, love the work. Um, and uh, that's where I've been so far. And, I, and I've been on, I've been on multiple projects here since I started in 2018. Yeah, you know, I think I started on their, the, the wholesale application. I moved over to the retail space a little bit, helped on that application, uh, moved to ClearTrack in between there for a little while and then bounced out of that to another project, led another project uh, called Periculus. And I'm back here now helping clear track again and, and working on the risky business system. So yeah, I've been in and out of so many different technologies in the last four years. It's, it's insane. It was more than I had done in the 15 years I was at the, the Coast Guard. Honestly, it was just, it was crazy. I loved it. I love it still. Awesome. And by the way, I absolutely love your hat and your shirt <laughs> representing in the house. I like somebody it. hook me up with uh, <laughs> some swag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> some, 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 some knucklehead hooked you up with some swag. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So Coast Guard. So I'm going to learn some stuff here today too. I know some of this, but I don't know it all. Um, <clears throat> so the Coast Guard, what, uh, what kind of, what kind of stuff, if you can tell us without killing us, what kind of stuff did you work on at the Coast Guard? <laughs> Yeah, no, and it's weird because I worked out of Kearneysville, West Virginia, which is far inland, nowhere near the ocean, right? Not really near many rivers either. Um, and everybody kind of gets floored by that. But that, I worked at their data center where they had all of their systems at and everything else. And that's where they did all their application development. And when I first came on board there, I was uh, on a project that we were helping build a uh, – a mobile application. And when I say mobile, I mean like, do you remember the HP iPack things? <laughs> the little yes. iPack things that you would play with and had a really bad screen on it. <laughs> we wanted to port the functionality in our web application that they had onto this platform and use it 
uh, when, you know, some of the Coast Guard officers or the cutters would go out and do boardings on recreational vessels. So they would use this handheld and it would have all of the the regs for, you know, the regs for, you know, compliance and everything else on, on, a, on specific you know, types of ships and things like that. And they would use that platform instead of referencing this ginormous uh, book they would carry in their bag that they had to bring on board with them. And so that was the first project I was introduced to at the Coast Guard. And uh, over the next four or five years, I helped. I really worked for that team almost entirely for about 10 years. Um, and it was basically their safety and law enforcement application. They had a web side of it and they had a mobile side of it. And that was kind of working the mobile side a bit. Nice. Yeah. So I, yep. I, I, have, I have a thought. Yeah. So I, you know how we get questions about what other industries might we take risky business into? <laughs> I actually think Marine would be one of them because we could probably get to Coast Guard data. Probably. That's public. Yeah. 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 Anyways, side, cool. side note. So uh, the next circle question. For me. Have, there you go. There you go. It's coming back around. So the next question I have, what's in the mug? So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you mine so that you can have a good laugh. Mine is uh, vodka and cranberry. <laughs> you went big. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I've got I, I've got a uh, I can't remember the name of the brewing company, but it is a hazy IPA. I'm a big IPA drinker. I love sampling all different kinds of them. Um, and so it's 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 one of those. It's probably one of those seven or eight percenters that I enjoy a couple of sips of every now and then, right? So I, you know, I uh, about a year, well, probably a, a year and a couple months ago. I stopped beer, which is yeah. killing me every day. And IPAs were definitely one of my favorites. I, I used to want to chase all different kinds of beers. Mm -hmm. So now I drink my vodka cranberry and I put my, my pinky up when I drink it. And uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, all right. So, okay. So Coast Guard, we're going to come back to Coast Guard again. Okay. Um, because we're going to, we're going to, we're going to make risky business work there. I think it can. Um, so what did you know about trucking? before clear track and more importantly before the risky business platform okay about trucking yeah i mean yeah. before clear track right you, you added that caveat so yeah. before clear track not mm -hmm. a whole lot honestly um you know i knew that i hate driving i-81 because they're filled with with tons of of, of trucks in on a four-lane high you know interstate it's it's a it's a nightmare sometimes and that's about the only, that's about as much as I knew about it uh, before I started on clear track. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, it was, it was very little, especially in the insurance area of that. I had no idea how uh, that even Yeah. Oh, we could buckle that question. So the insurance too. Okay. So now fast forward to clear track. Uh, what did you learn about clear track um, as you started to dabble in that? And for those that don't know, clear track is our compliance technology. Yeah. I, you know, I think, I think I started to have a concept or I started to learn the concept around the, you know, how many fleets were out there and, and how many trucks they had underneath them. And just the, you know, the sheer number of, of drivers that move in and out of those trucks all the time. Um, and then specifically in clear track, trying to keep track of, of the compliance part of it, part of it, like you said, where, you know, you're worried about how many drivers have their expirations for the driver's license coming up or, you know, the trucks got this and that wrong with it, you know, and tracking all of this dis disparate information, which I'm sure lived in multiple systems or maybe didn't even live in any, I, I'm not sure. Uh, right. And ClearTrack kind of brings all that together. So I had a vision into it from the pieces of the data that, that you were storing already in ClearTrack. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now let's fast forward to uh, the infamous Lloyd's Lab, right? We mm. had that. We had that fun. Uh, 12 weeks in London. Whew, that was, it was fun. It was fun. You but, had 12 <laughs> weeks in London. <laughs> I got to be at home yeah. still. Yeah. I live vicariously through you. It was, it was rough. So uh, just in case uh, folks that are listening don't know what the Lloyd's Lab is. So uh, Lloyd's out in London um, is finding ways to continue to innovate. And they have what they call the Lloyd's Lab which is where it's like a 10 week accelerator program and they invite people in to build new technologies. And then at the end of that 10 weeks, um, you get to show off that technology. So we participated in the Lloyd's lab from April to July. Is that April right? 25th, I think is when it officially started. <laughs> it ended July one. I have the dates. 
<laughs> I remember them. <laughs> so now, what did you learn about trucking through that experience? Well, yeah. So I think I think it kind of started with the Codathon. I kind of jumped over that a little bit, but you know that that Codathon project kind of gave the first insight into what was it like fifteen different things that we had in our system for telematics data for a truck. We had more, but I, I remember in the Codathon, with it only being four days, we could only look at those things. And then we moved into the Lloyd's project, and we expand. I remember you sending the email. I, I'm sure if I search for it, it'll be at the bottom there. And it's this huge bulleted list of all of these data points. It's like 130, 140, if I remember correctly. 172. 172. There you go. 172 <laughs> data points uh, that I had no idea we even had. Um, and where they were uh, from from where we came from the codathon, I was like, oh my goodness, this is going to be this is going to be big, and we're going to use all of these, you know. So I think the first thing I learned was the the fact that we have a lot of data already on the trucks that we you know have in our system, and even the ones that are not in the system um, from you know from the company side of it, from the fleet side of it, with FMCSA information, and then you've got the entire telematics, you know data that we've got to look at uh and uh you know the new the new thompson reuter stuff as well and i think it's it's just it's it's amazing how much data is being collected specifically too on those on those devices that are on board those trucks which i kind of had an inkling that those you know obd connectors there's probably something on board those trucks to monitor them you'd think there would have to be um and so now i've kind of like had that idea and now seen it become a reality and seeing these data points, see the speeding, you know, metrics and, and where they are and how much they, how hard they break all these crazy stats that we collect uh, from those devices. It's, it's fascinating. It, 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 it's nuts, isn't it? And then yeah. what about insurance? So let's, let's, let's kick over to the insurance side, right? Cause we do, we really deal with both. We so what's been, what's been the, the, you know, if you, if you rewind it again, go back to um, clear track, I forgot about the Codathon. That was a good one to remember. Mm-hmm. Codathon, Lloyd's Lab, and then we're going to get to where we are today. So, give me, give me, what what'd you know, and what do you know now? Well, nothing about insurance, uh, especially for trucking, right? And I, I, I had just had a, you know, probably an amateur thought. It's like, well, it's probably it probably works like my car insurance does for my truck, right? Or, or you know, whatever, right? Like it's probably pretty simple like that. But um, I have no idea where that money came from how it flowed down to the companies how it was who was backing these insurance companies that insure my vehicle or insure these trucks on the road um and so that was i remember you trying to explain to the team i think it may have been during codathon i'm not sure where you went through and just tried to describe what a syndicate was and you sent us the lloyd's site and we were going there and trying to read i was like okay what is this and and they so they've got all the capital and it's fed into this and who's 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 a cover holder you know (laughs) <laughs> all of that was all brand new. Um, it's uh-huh. not, I worked on periculus and it was, I don't think I was really kind of around those, those terms. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't think I had a good concept on those particular portions of it. So yeah, no. And from that, um, yeah, I mean, it was, it just, it kind of, it morphed into what you kind of demoed for the codathon and your idea and your whole pitch, which was all these companies trying to track, uh, you know, how much money they're losing through all of the claims and everything else. And, and what was it? What is it? 7 billion was the number you threw 7. out. I think $5 billion. $7.5 billion. That was our Codathon winner statement, by the way, that's how we won the Codathon. I feel like, um, but that was shocking. That's a ton of money, right. To, yeah. to, to lose year in and year out from, uh, you know, losses in the trucking uh, industry. So that was all brand new to me. All brand new. Yeah, and 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 roll that forward. So so Lloyd's sponsors about thirty billion of about a fifty or sixty billion dollar industry. So if you roll that forward to the remaining twenty to thirty billion, you're talking more like twelve to fifteen billion dollars a year. Right. Billion. It's huge. Right. It's huge. It's been a journey. So what was uh huh, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask the two questions and I'm a little afraid of the answer on the second one. Uh oh. Um, so what was your favorite part of the lab experience? Favorite part of the lab experience? Yeah. Uh, I think it was, 
I have way more favorites than I, than I do, you know, least favorite sections of it. So I'll say oh, that. Uh, thank yeah, God. So you're good. You're good. Uh, I, I this is not a, scripted, by the way. So I have no idea what you're about to say. <laughs> right. I, I love learning new things. So the mm -hmm. coming on to the project after not being on ClearTrack for what was like a couple of years, I think, maybe a year and a half. Um, this was all new to me. Two years. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was you know, we were going to get to explore new, you know, AWS technologies that we have not used here, right? Specifically, and I know we haven't hit it specifically in the Lloyd's project, but the concept of it is kind of being borne out now is that we're going to start using machine learning, right? Uh, you know, we've, we've, we're have we've starting to assemble a, a, a massive data lake and organize our data in a better way. That was, that was a brand new concept. So I get a, I get a kick out of learning new things. There's no question there. I wouldn't be doing this uh, and chasing after new projects and new technologies if I, if I didn't love it. Um, I would say the other the other pieces of it I really, really enjoyed. I have a, an affinity towards UX and UI. I always have. I've, I've loved that portion of it. Um, and so we got to work with AWS. I think it was their Envision team with Ian. I remember him. And I, I loved it. it was, I used to pick his brain through, the, I think it was a few weeks uh, over time there. He was helping us out design the Risky Business UI. And uh, I just found it fascinating. Like the he went through and he interviewed different customers, everybody else, and asking about how they would use it. And he kind of built out our personas. And I thought that was really cool. Uh, I love that part of it. Um, and I think, you know, above all, it, it was it was exciting to be part of the project when it was just a Codathon project. Because I've had, I've worked on three or maybe four Codathon projects now. And not all of them see the light of production, right? They don't all go to production. They're not all the best idea. Um, but this one was, and here it is, it, it went from that point a few months later, it's in Lloyd's, it gets accepted. And here, you know, we work on beta after that, and we're already working on the first release of it. It's, that's a truly fulfilling, you know, you know, to have that feeling, to see it move from nothing from your head into code, into more code and, 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 and bigger, right. And it has such a, a bright future and, and ahead of it. It really does. It's, it's going to, it's going to change some oh. things. Oh, yeah, for sure. And just yeah. think about this, all the stuff that we're going to finish in the first quarter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Scott likes to talk about the first quarter. He likes to put a lot in there. That's okay, though. We, we're challenged so on we the gotta, team. We have listen, a great you team. know what? I, I, I heard on Stand Up today one of the best comments I heard in a long time. Hey, I'm going to move this one into, uh, you know, go coding it, and but I don't have a, I don't have a lot of time. I feel like that's okay. We all understand. It's We're just going to go move forward. We're going to move forward. That's, that's right. That's how we got oh, yeah. to be. You're That's talking what about I love about this morning. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was awesome. Okay, so now here yeah. comes the question that I'm afraid of. Actually, not. Okay. Um, what was your least paid favorite part of the lab? Hmm. To be honest with you, um, there's not a whole lot because I, much like the the feeling you get when you do the Codathon projects, there's this like it's just a longer time frame. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like the, the, I guess the one thing that I, that was concerned with the most that probably occupied the back of my mind a lot was whether or not we were moving fast enough mm -hmm. and we were going to deliver and people were going to, going to like it. Right. And not mm -hmm. wanting to let you down. Right. Not, not, you know, the whole team, right. And just trying to get it to that goal line without taking too much out of it. Uh, so that, you know, it would have the right reception. Right. I think that was the that was the biggest part for me that I did not like. I think it's kind of like a side effect of working on a project anyways like this. I, I don't, it's not something that necessarily is tied to Lloyd's. I mean, it, uh, I prefer sometimes that fast paced development time where you kind of eliminate. I mean, you know, we eliminate a lot of daily activities just like we did during the Codathon. It's like, yeah, we're not, we're going to all get on Zoom or whatever. We're going to just be on there for three hours while we work at the same time. Um, mm -hmm. when somebody texts you or calls you, you answer right away. Like there's no delay. There's nothing right. else impeding your day. So I, that, that's, that's a positive to me. Some people may not like that. Right. Um, it, it could be overly stressful, but I enjoyed it. Um, I think the the only other thing that I can think of that kind of stands out was that, you know, we've, we integrate with some vendors for some of our data and the data is not necessarily consistent between different endpoints with those vendors or between those vendors. And, and sometimes, uh, you know, 
we've had multiple meetings about new vendors we're going to integrate with. And all I can think about is, you know, okay, well, are we going to plug There's that piece in? Is it going to be like this one? <laughs> I know. Yeah. So th those two things stand out the most to me as my yeah. least favorite. Uh, but overall, it was positive. You yeah. 95% was positive. It, you know what? It was it was a cool experience. I was, it really was wiped by the time I was done. Absolutely. Well, you guys, you know, I, I disappeared for three I know. Days. You guys thought you I was off dead. The grid. <laughs> I, did, I didn't think you were dead, but I knew that you were somewhere and you, you had shut your phone off. And you deserve that's it. Exactly, I mean, like that's exactly what I did. <laughs> you, you were with us answering the calls whenever we needed you on, you know, London time, and then making barbecue every night and drinking <laughs> when you could. And running and around the market, right? and running around the market. I mean, literally, we had uh, somewhere between ninety and hundred people at our demo day, not not the right. Lloyd's demo day. We did our own. That was that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, I was going to mention that too. That was amazing to see that particular demo at the end there, the final presentation. I mean, the number of I people still don't know what I said. I got. You... <laughs> I, I honestly like I, I got about I got about halfway through, and I, I remember where I picked up. Um, so Chris Moore, he's over at Apollo. I bought. Um, he did a podcast too. Um, he had asked me a question if the system that we built could start to move the industry towards um, like a per mile rate or a, a per week rate or a per driver rate. And I remember saying that I kind of snapped out of it. And I almost wonder if he knew that I needed somebody to smack me in the head to snap me out of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, I, I remember saying, are you ready for me to blow your mind? And then that was it. That was it. <laughs> your mind uh, and, got blown. <laughs> and it was, it was, it was turned around from there. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was definitely a cool experience. You know, it's been, it's been cool now to, to be back and to be a mentor for another company. Um, hopefully I'll do it again in this next one. Um, and you know, I, I, I tell the folks in the lab all the time, you know, I'll give back all I can because it was good. For, it was, it, it was good for the company. It was good for me too. You know, I, mm -hmm. I just, just like you said, sometimes you need that jolt of electricity just to kind of keep you moving forward. And I think, uh, yeah, the lab did that for me. Tired me yeah. out. Probably took a couple of years yeah. off my life, but it gave me a good it, job. The beauty of it is, is that you had all the right people in mm -hmm. all the same spot. So all of that information you could gather to help improve yeah. it. You can't replace that. So that's why that, I keep going back. Right? That's why I keep going back is because mm -hmm. every time I go, I mean, you, I, uh, hopefully you guys feel it. Like I get energized again because what we're building really is going to make a difference. Um, and I can see it. The industry can see it. Um, you know, the feedback's been tremendous. Um, so now Absolutely. I want to switch gears. I want to switch gears. We're going to go, because you talked a little bit about machine learning, which mm -hmm. I am super excited about. And if you think about what we did, what we all talked about before the end of the year, it's really moving us from uh, mm -hmm. a risk scoring and monitoring platform into what I believe, uh, at least from my bit of knowledge on tech and machine learning and AI and all that stuff. I really believe we're going to get more towards predictive analytics. So for anybody Absolutely. that's listening uh, to this, you know, talk, explain machine learning, kind of what it does, how it's unique and where you think it's going to take our platform. Okay. Yeah, no, machine learning is, and it's one of the most exciting pieces of this project, even in the very beginning, because we all kind of knew we were building towards that, you mm -hmm. know, um, but we didn't, you know, it takes time to learn it. It takes time to, to understand it and, and get it ready. So machine, just to start out. So machine learning is, is kind of a subset of artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's a, it's a concept, right? Where you feed it data, historical data typically, and it kind of reads that and builds models and algorithms around that to make informed decisions or to inform you about certain things, look at trends, touch on what you just said, make predictive analytics possibly. Um, and I think the, the biggest thing that sets it apart and something to remember is that when we started this project, we looked at the data we had, you sat down with Camilo, right. And Craig, I remember when we were working on something else, you guys sat down with Excel and tried to figure out what, what does this mean? What does this score mean when they get this, when they're speeding too much, you know, and you came up with this algorithms, right? Right. But you can only look at a certain amount of data. As a human right. being, you can only look at 
a spreadsheet. And if it has 150,000 rows in it, good luck. You're never mm-hmm. going to get through it. We don't have time for that, right? So that's the biggest thing that separates it. It's that, you know, it can process millions and millions of pieces of data at once. And, you know, with just spending some computing power to do it, it will look at it, plug and chug and figure out some information about it. And that's where uh, I think we all see uh, where it's going, right? And it's that, you know, looking at the data we cap- we capture on trucks, look at the data we capture on the fleets that operate those trucks and the drivers that drive those trucks, marrying that to the output of losses and claims mm-hmm. and being able to tell the machine learning system, look at this data, look at this historical data. What story does it tell you as a machine to arrive at this loss, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think we as humans can look at that and say that with any certainty, we're guessing, we're gonna guess. Um, And I think as we use ML more, we're gonna start to see how far off we are with our scoring algorithms, and it's gonna help us improve what we already have. And on top of that, at some point, when you have enough data in there, it will be telling us about things. And I always, bring up the movie Minority Report. And I, to, I, I told you that in the beginning of, mm-hmm. I think it was a Lloyd's Project or somewhere around there. Yeah. And it reminds me of Minority Report because one of the things that we haven't said yet, which is I know we're talking about saving money and everything else, but saving lives, right? Yeah. The trucks that operate on the road today that fail inspections constantly or have drivers with 10 DUIs or whatever it might be, or maybe they like the color blue as an example for machine learning, right? We don't know what the correlations are Right. But they, a lot of those cases end and those claims end in, in someone being you know hurt or killed in an accident. And that's yeah. what we want to prevent ultimately, right? Um, and yeah. I think this system, as it grows and we engage more of the machine learning in it, it's going to be telling us and telling the users of the system, you need to watch out for this because the last 10 times this happened, 25, 30% of the time, you know, it resulted in a loss of life. And I think that's so exciting. Um, and it's a new space for sure for, for you, for, for us here at Lowry's Risk Group. And, 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 and we're just, you know, we're jumping in head first. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah. I, I got to tell you something. I mean, it's been a journey. And I think, yeah. you know, one of the, the, well, I've learned a lot of lessons. I'm not going to put a number on it because I'll probably think of it as I go. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, one of one of the lessons I learned is um, patience, right? Like mm-hmm. what we're what we're doing takes time. It's yeah. you know, it, you know, NASA didn't build the first rocket ship overnight, right? They it took them years to build it. And if you think about Codathon, prototype, uh, and launch coming up, mm-hmm. um, one year, almost, yeah. almost, almost, almost on the day. The day. Um, yeah. It's crazy that we've come so far in the amount of stuff that we had to accomplish. And so being patient is a big thing. The other thing I had to learn, <laughs> I got to, I got, I got to, I got to take stuff off the plate for the team, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you have, and you've stay learned focused, well, Scott. Stay focused, stay focused. <laughs> it's, it's That's been right. tough. It's been tough. It's been tough. But yeah, we, you know what? Listen, I think you said something earlier that I 100% agree with, like, it took us a while to find the right team, right? Like yeah. it, it took a long while to find the right team. And I think we've got such a good groove now. Um, you know, the more that I think the more gas we put in the engine, the, just the faster the car is going to go. And mm-hmm. the sooner we're going to get to the places that we know we're going to get anyways, but we'll get there. We'll get there faster. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited about it. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You got You got to grow the team responsibly, right? We, yeah. You have to work with yeah. what you have. Yeah. As you get more work, you know, the more there's there's more interest behind the product, then it kind of expands out again. And who knows where we'll be in a year from now, right? Oh, as far as we're going to be we're going to we're going to be we're going to be cooking with gasoline. So now, <laughs> uh, <laughs> now I want you I want you to hear the song that came into my head. I don't know why. Oh, no. Right before I got we got on this and we were doing the podcast, right? And I feel so, like I know it, but <laughs> Come on. what do you what do you think it is? What do you think it is? It's from a movie. It is from a movie. Do you want me to narrow it in scope? Does it have Sylvester Stallone in it? 
It does. <laughs> Rocky, right? That's right. That's right. Okay. So we're we're launching sometime in the next thirty days ish, right? We're going going live with V1, maybe 15 days, right? All in the first quarter. I'm just kidding. I'm not commenting. Notice how I didn't change anything. I'm just leaving it alone. I was trying I was trying to hook you. I don't know. Remember okay. the time I said this in the podcast? You gotta do it. <laughs> what do you mean, time you said it? I'll have it on record. We'll we'll just play it back. No, all right, so here we go. This is it. This is the song. <laughs> We're in the final countdown. <laughs> Anyways, that's the song Absolutely. I thought of when I was as I was walking up here to, to start the podcast out. Oh, We're yeah. close, you, right? We're close. Yeah. So, so what do you um, what do you think? Well, we already have a whole list of stuff that we're going to do next. But what are you most excited about the launch? And what are you? What's your what's your biggest concern? So you tell me yours, and I'm going to tell you mine. Okay. So for 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 the first launch of this, yeah, version one. Yeah, no, I think I'm, I am, uh, I'm excited to say that the product will not, you know, no longer be in, in beta anymore. It's going to feel very, it's going to feel real, right? The customers that move in our system, they're, they're going to be in the system permanently. We're not going to be, you know, you know, getting rid of them after three months or whatever it's going to be, right? Like it's going to be legitimate. And uh, I think part of this that we, you know, as we've talked about over the last several months is that, you know, we're going to start to build out this idea of ClearTrack and kind of change its ecosystem. It's going to be more of a hub for, for customers to come into and push their data into and be able to utilize the, the features of risky business that we've already talked about, as well as the, the features that are in ClearTrack right now that are going to be made available through the hub. That, that whole thing is going to be amazing. And I think the, 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 the idea of, of, of taking what's in ClearTrack today and, because it's, it's a fairly old technology, right? ClearTrack, uh, you know, the original one, but we're going to kind of grow it up, make it more mature and, and put it in there. And that's just, I mean, there, there's so much work to be done there and, and it's, there's, there's so much to be gained there and it's exciting. That, that part excites me the most for sure. Um, as far as my concerns, uh, you know, I think they're, they're always going to be, you know, as a, as a developer and on the team, right. They're always going to be around meeting the mark meeting the expectations that, you know, you have and that you've been kind of, uh, you know, putting out there. I think that's, it's, it's a lot like the Lloyd's thing, right? Making sure we can achieve what we need to achieve. But I always, I, I think we mitigate that pretty well because we have some pretty honest conversations around, all right, we're not going to be able to do this. So let's pare it down to what you really, really need right now and let's make it happen. And we're successful when we do that. And so I think as long as we keep doing that, that worry, we probably won't need to worry about that. Um, but that's what that's what keeps me up. And I think, you know, you always got to think about the competition, right? Uh, you know, I know you it keeps you up. I'm sure. Are we gonna Are we gonna get Are we gonna stay ahead? Uh, and you know, how do we do it if we're if we're not going fast enough? How do we you know How do we expand it and make it make it operate quicker? So, um, yeah, those are the things that that I, that concern me. The rest of it. I know we can do all of that stuff. I know we can get ML working. I, I know that all of these things take time, like you said, about the patience, right? Um, but we're going to get them done for mm -hmm. sure. So, Yeah, totally agree. Uh, I think, you know, mine, my most excited, um, it's like, uh, I'll equate it back to when the kids were little, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my God, they their first soccer game or, you know, the first time they took steps or the first time they crawled, mm -hmm. right? And it's like I tell you, I, well, I, I say this a lot, right? I tell you guys all the time. You, you know, I like cooking, right? So the first time I cook anything, it's the worst it's going to be. And I believe <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, don't, it's only going to get better, right? Because I'm going to figure right. out what, what I do wrong. Why didn't it taste good? Why was it too peppery or too salty or too sugary or mm -hmm. whatever, right? Um, and I think when this one comes out, it's going to be, amazing. I actually don't have any fears. Um, the fears that you mentioned, you know, when are we moving fast enough? Who's going to try and catch mm -hmm. up? What are they going to do all those things? But that has nothing to do with the release. Um, but yeah, I'm just excited. I'm excited to continue to show the world what we have. And I think they're ready to see it. I used to be afraid of, um, like when we did the demo day, mm -hmm. I used to be afraid of, is anybody going to like it? Right. Right. We built this thing. 
but I th we're long past that. I mean, yeah. the, 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 the <laughs> people want it, right? It's just <laughs> right. Moving faster and faster and faster. Yeah. So now yeah, that's, that, that's mine. I don't, I don't, I don't have, I'm not, I'm not really afraid of anything with this launch. It's going, you know what? Listen, it's going to break. Something's going to happen. Somebody's going to click a button and either something's not going to move fast enough or something disappears or something. It's technology. It happens. Like I don't. Absolutely. I am long over that fear. You know, like, yeah, you just expect it. Something's going to happen. It's, it's an iterative process. Anyone who's been in the software development knows this. Like yeah. you work on something, you work on, you know, building a house, but well, I don't like the way the room looks or I need it to be painted a different color. And I actually want a third story, you know, like that's how it works. Yeah. Uh, and that's how you, you know, meet the demands of, of your space, your business space. And yep. you got to be okay with that, you know? Yeah, totally agree. Well, listen, we, uh, we, we got to our, uh, we got to our 35 minutes to try and keep it around there. Um, what'd you think? Did you have fun? Oh yeah. Sweet. Yeah, it's great. Sweet. All right. Well, listen, cheers, my friend, to uh, all the great success we're going to have, all the cool stuff we're going to build together and uh, change in the industry. It's going to be awesome. Absolutely. We'll be here a year from now talking about something completely, you know, that will blow our minds that we're talking about it already a year later. So, oh my God. Thanks you have no idea. You have no idea the amount of stuff that lives in my head. I have an inkling. I, you're right. I don't know the exact amount for sure. It's a it's it's a it's a fun and scary place all at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, I cool. love it all, Scott. Thanks for having me, man. All right. Oh, I'm glad you came on. We're gonna do this again. I hope you enjoyed our show today. Remember, when it comes to creativity and innovation, I always like to quote one of my favorite lines out of the movie Tommy Boy. If you ain't growing, you're dying. There ain't no third direction. My name's Scott Greenbus. I'll see you on the next show. Peace.